Okay, so now that we have talked a little bit about this uh, control panel, um, the other thing that I want to go ahead and do is really quickly show you up here, there's this little config button. If you click on that, um, this is if you wanted to auto start any of these modules, like if you wanted to auto start Apache and for instance, MySQL, every time your computer started up, you could do this and save it. I would recommend not doing that though, because it's going to use extra processing. And if you're not currently working on, um, you know, your dynamic web files, then really it's, it's of no or little use to you. So I would recommend not doing that. Also, you know, it's just, it's one more thing to, to eat up your services. Okay, so I'm gonna close that. But now you know where it is. Next thing I want to show you is um, basically how everything is set up. So before I had told you that if you go to all programs and you go to XAMPP and then you come down here, and there's this XAMPP HT docs folder. I can click on that. And what this is, if you look at the directory, so it's on your, your hard drive, probably your C drive, and then in, in the XAMPP folder, and then there's this htdocs folder. The htdocs folder is going to be your web serving directory. So anything that's inside of that web serving directory is what actually gets served up to the web. Now, what do I mean by getting served up to the web? Let's open up our browser. And I want to show you something. So for instance, if I go to, um, if I go to Ford.com, for instance, this is something that I can access from anywhere in the world, this www.ford.com domain. That means that it's running on a cloud server somewhere that has the ability to serve pages up to any place in the world. Okay. Well, I should say any place where countries don't block outside information. All right. So, uh, for instance, like China blocks some uh some websites. Okay, so, uh, but if I go to my local computer, local host, right, this is just available on my computer, and that's it. Like, so if I were to, you know, run my web service, and then I called up a friend and said, hey, or even better yet, you called up your teacher and said, hey, I'm having a problem. Can you look at the stuff on my computer? The response to that would be no, I cannot see what's on your computer. Only you can see what's on your computer. The benefit of doing all of this is that PHP files, uh, dynamic scripting files like PHP, server-side scripting files, will not run without having a development server installed. You have to actually have the web service installed. All right, and the web service, which is Apache is going to have a PHP module that is compiled with it. And the PHP module will handle all of that PHP scripting stuff, right? And then it will parse it, dynamically parse it, and then digest it and turn it back into HTML, which is what we are able to, to see whenever we go to inspect the, the code in the like Chrome inspector, <clears throat> excuse me, or the Firefox inspector or something like that, right? So, but when it's localhost, it is only on your computer. It is the same thing as typing 127.0.0.1 like that. It's still going to load. It's still going to work. If I were to go here, it still works, right? What 127.0.0.1 is, is it's what's referred to as a loopback address. The loopback address exists on just in this exact configuration on all computers, all servers, all computers, whether it's your home computer, whether it's a laptop, whether it's um, a server that's up in the cloud, 127.0.0.1 is a loopback address that is recursive. It's like, it's like a person saying, me, myself, I. It's a way to refer to myself if I'm a server, okay? That is my uh, IP address. Um, and so, what happens is that there's a file called the hosts file, which is um, something you could look up on your computer if you wanted. But basically, it's a little text file that's in a specific location. And this is true of Macs and PCs and Linux computers. And what is in that host file is it's a mapping of this 
loopback address to the word localhost so that it knows that if you type localhost in on this computer, it knows to basically find that 127.0.0.1 address. Okay, just so you understand that. So that means that only this computer that I'm currently on right now or that you're currently on in your own Windows environment can see this particular uh, set of files. All right. All right, so hopefully that's clear enough. This is not, for instance, the same as going to uh, miracosta.edu, right? This is something that is world visible up on a cloud server, not, you know, that, that's not behind a firewall that has everything blocked, right? Whenever you're on your own server at home or in a coffee shop, you are on a router, you're using a router that basically is dynamically giving out uh, an IP address that is going to constantly change, all right? And it it's something that's constantly changing. There's no way that somebody else could act actually find you unless you had a static address. And when I say that 127.0.0.1 is your computer's uh, self-referring loopback address, it is technically static, but it is it's, it's again, it's like saying me, myself, I. You can still refer to yourself anywhere you go in the world and you'll know that it's always yourself, right? But somebody else can't find this address because that literally is the loopback address for every single computer pretty much that's out there, right? Okay, so you know that, for instance, when you're saying you're referring to yourself, that you're only referring to yourself and that when someone else refers to themselves, they're only referring to themselves, right? So same principle. Okay, so now that that is straight, let me show you where this is being served up. Basically anything that is, I'm gonna type localhost again, okay? So anything that is in this localhost directory is basically equivalent to what is in the htdocs directory because the htdocs directory is the web serving folder on your computer with the XAMPP um, installation. Okay, now what you're gonna notice is if you just type localhost right now and you click return, it automatically redirects you to the dashboard. I'm gonna explain why that's happening. If you look inside of htdocs, there's this folder called dashboard, and you see that it's sort of tit for tat, right? You've got localhost slash dashboard. Well, it's like saying htdocs slash dashboard, okay? So what's happening though is it's finding this index file, which is a PHP file. I'm gonna open this. So what it's doing, you don't have to understand exactly all of what it's doing, but basically it's saying, hey, if this condition is true, basically if the, the server is running, um, then what it's going to do is give it a header redirection and it's going to relocate it so that it directs it to the dashboard folder. That's basically what it's going to do. And if the service isn't running, then it's going to say something's wrong with the with the Jamp installation, right? So <clears throat> what we can do is that it's automatically finding that file because it's called index.php. If we just rename it and call it like index dash original, something like that, okay? Then now if I go to localhost like this, it will give me a directory listing because directory listing is by default enabled um, in this uh, development ins installation, which is perfect because if I still wanna go to the dashboard, then I can just click on dashboard and I still have all of my links and they still work, no problem, right? Everything is still there. And you can see where things are located by looking at it like this. You don't want to get rid of that dashboard, okay? And you don't want to, <clears throat> you know, you just don't want to get rid of any of that stuff. Oh, and also, while I'm in the dashboard, if I click on PHP My Admin, you notice that it goes to the PHP My Admin folder, right? So if you wanted to just sort of double check that and look here, you would go, wait a second, there is no PHP My Admin folder in here. So what's happening is that it's also got a redirection. So what I'm gonna suggest that you do is basically leave all of this stuff alone so that your dashboard doesn't break, all right? But just change the index file to index-original. And then what you could do is you can make a new folder inside of here just inside of the htdocs folder, you're gonna make a new folder and you're just gonna call it dev. 
and it stands for development, but it's nice and short and it's easy to type. And this is where you can put like your testing files, your development files and stuff like that, okay? And um, it's it'll be really simple then if you want to go like this, you would just go localhost dash or slash dev. And then that way it'll be really easy for you to do your testing files in here. And this is really common practice. Um, developers will create a folder that's called dev or sandbox or something that is basically where they can just do a bunch of testing scripts, okay? So that is the way that I would recommend that you get this basic setup going so that you don't always have it redirecting to the dashboard, but instead you can just type up um, in your browser, you can just type up localhost and there it is, and then you can just select dev right from there. Now, real quickly also, I wanna show you what will happen if I stop. Stopping my SQL doesn't really matter so much right now, but it will if, if you're trying to access the, um, the PHP my admin or use any kind of database, right? So if I go to the dashboard now and I go to PHP my admin, I'm gonna get an error because my SQL is not currently running, right? It's because I don't have my SQL service started. So if you ever get something like this, it might be very well because your MySQL service is stopped, okay? Now, if I stop Apache and I go to localhost, watch what happens. Okay, site can't be reached. It doesn't know what, it, what localhost is. It doesn't know what it's looking for. That's because localhost is no longer uh, redirecting things. You have to have a web service installed for this thing to work and you have to have it running, okay? So if I were to get that started again and I go back here and I hit refresh, which is would be control R or pressing that, you see that it works again, okay? The next thing that I wanna really quickly go over is some things that I think were just gonna make your life a lot easier. Um, right, so if this is the Explorer window that we were looking at before where you can see the file pathway, it's on the C drive at the root level of the computer on the hard drive, there's the JAMP folder, and then inside of that is the htdocs folder. We already determined the htdocs is your web serving folder, so anything that is inside of that folder is going to be visible whenever you go to a browser and you go into localhost it's gonna be visible. On a production server that is in the cloud, um, like on a fully registered domain name, anything that's gonna be in a web serving folder is literally gonna be world visible. So um, that's just something to always keep in mind. Now, let's just go back up to the main JAMP folder. And I wanna show you a bunch of things that are in this folder so that you have an understanding of what's happening. So like I said before, this htdocs folder is world visible and I can do something to make that stand out a little bit. Um, I, I'm gonna right click it, I'm gonna go to properties, and I'm gonna customize it over here. Um, and I'm gonna change the icon. And I actually have an icon that I downloaded from the web, so I'm gonna go to browse, and I'm gonna choose this icon. You could use one of the standard ones that you know is in, that pops up as an option. And I'm gonna click okay, and apply it. And what that does is that it makes it stand out it's really clear that that's my web serving folder. So I can right click this and I can create a shortcut and I can drag it over here to the desktop. I could just change it to htdocs. And as long as you have that little arrow, you know that it's just a shortcut or an alias. And that way I can always just jump to it really easily, right? And then I can just create new files or drag and drop stuff in and out of here. Just remember that your stuff has to be in this htdocs folder for it to be web visible. So if you're working on your desktop in some other folder and saving your PHP files and then you go to localhost to look at it, it's not gonna work unless you put that folder inside of here, right? So just remember that, okay? Um, now the other thing too that I just really quickly wanna reiterate is that everything that Jamp uses um, to host your, you know, your MySQL databases, your htdocs, your, you know, your web files. It's all stored in this uh, JAMP folder that's in your C drive. The reason I'm reiterating that is because it's really easy, like if you were to change computers or something, and you think you do a backup just by backing up your user directory, just realize that your user directory is not in the same place make sure that you always get a backup of this JAMP folder so that 
You don't lose it if you are switching computers or if your computer dies. Otherwise, you're going to lose everything that you're doing for the web and for your databases.